Hey, how you doing? Hi, good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for being here virtually. Of course. All right, let's give people a few more minutes to sign on. Be informal. Hey, Jamie, how are you? All right, I'm not too sure how many people are gonna be showing up. It is lunchtime. I know people are hungry, maybe grabbing their food, but uh, I got you all. I guess we could get started. Uh, so I sent out an email this morning with a few facts about interim assessments. Um, so interim assessments, oh, hi, Leslie. Um, an interim assessment is just like a big review type of assessment. It should be given 
in semester one and semester two, and it just covers everything you've done up until that point. You don't want to give it too close to the end of the semester because the point is to give this assessment and leave some time uh, for you to intervene if students are struggling, especially in those region space courses. Um, you want to make sure you're you're there uh, right away. So I think someone's coming in to my room. Yes, come on in. Come on in. <laughs> yes, come on in. Yeah, so I'm on Zoom, so you can join me there. You can just listen to me. Um, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I'm dealing with uh, two different types of meetings here. Yes, yeah, so there is a link if you go into your email, it's there right now. Um, so you can just listen to me talk, but then you'll be able to see my visuals on the Zoom. So that would be probably the best. Rachel, you can make me co-host and I'll let anyone in as you're sharing. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah. All right, who we got? And we got David. Hey, David, how are you? And who's in your classroom, Rachel? Um, so we've got, uh, correct me wrong, Keisha. 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 Keisha, okay. Uh, and our new L teacher. Jackie. Yes. Okay, Jackie. cool. All right, awesome. Yeah, so I think we're just missing Peter, Ty, and Elena. Yeah. In the meantime, here's Let's a get started. Poll. How are you? Yeah, Kristen might stop by at some point if she is able to. If not, she's going to miss out on all the fun. Oh, I've got to an account. All right, give me one second, Zoom people. Oh no, we right. I'm angry. gonna get started here talking about interim assessments. Boom. Um, all right, so here is our data assessment website that I'll put in the chat here. There's lots of good information on this. Boom. So this first tab here, how to log, it has a link to the training I ran in August that has a very in-depth look at a spreadsheet you can use for interim assessment if you fancy yourself a sheets person and are interested in exploring that. And here's some more helpful tips. When you're ready to give your interim assessment, I can help you through the entire process. You wanna give an interim assessment semester one and semester two, that just covers everything you've taught up until that point. I've been an algebra teacher for many years here, so that's the example that I use. When you're giving an interim assessment, best practice is to have a standard or a skill for each question and have a point value for each question. And this is something you wanna have planned ahead of time. So it's not like you have a stack of papers and you're trying to scramble to find 
all this stuff. Um, you are able to use Scantrons for interim assessments. I actually I have the machine in my room right now if you want to use that at some point. So just let me know and we could set that up. But you want to be able to cover everything you've done so far. So I understand if you have lots of kids, Scantrons might be the best bet. So uh, any questions about what an interim assessment is? Yes. So we had a question from Keisha. An interim assessment is just something given in the middle ish of each semester to see where your students are at. You don't want to give it at the very end because then damage done, it's kind of too late. So you want to give it a little bit before. If you're not sure on the timing, you can ask your department chair and you guys can discuss that and work something out that's going to be best for your classroom. And it's also good to start picking your deets if you want to avoid giving an interim assessment the same day as everybody else is giving one. But these kids have finals week. They should have the stamina for multiple ones in a day. So don't worry too much about that. Are there any other questions about what it is? All right, so you have a couple of options for how to log data for your interim assessment because the goal is to give this assessment and be able to analyze and see what's going on with your kids. So if we go to the assessment data tab on our website here, I have a new option. So if you were in my August training and you remember it was, it was a lot of Google Sheets stuff and it might not have been for you, I get it, not everyone is as into data. So I've included a new option, the basic assessment data option. And this one is just as good. So if you click on that, it'll ask you to make a copy right away. And this will go into your drives and you can make as many copies if you, as you want, if you screw up, whatever it is. So that link will always be there. If you decide to use this, just make sure you share it with me and your department chair. So here's what this one looks like. You have your spot here to put your name and this is something you gotta fill in if you're gonna use this, the total number of points on your exam. Could be out of 100, could already be converted, could be out of 36, could be out of 50, whatever it is. So this is my sample one here. I'll say I should probably make a copy and not mess with the original. If it'll let me, there we go. Oh, and here's your FAQ slides. I'll get to that in a second. There's some visuals there. All right, so here's my IA1 tab on the bottom here. I have a spot for two, and then you have a little summary if you wanna see both scores next to each other for your kids. So let's say my exam is out of 50. My first student is Rachel and I'll show you how to get a report with all the kids' names already done so you don't have to type those in. You'll be able to get their ID and their gender and you'll be able to click off if they have an IEP, if they're an L or they're both. You could see the formulas are already doing their thing on the right side, which is a nice feature. So let's say I have Rachel here. She has an IEP out of 50 points. I put my raw score here, she gets a 25. And you can see everyone's average, all of these people here. You can always delete the rows that you're not using that don't have kids' names. And I'll just start calculating. It'll give you the IEP average, the L average, IEPL, male, female, and other. But this is gonna be based off of their gender and power school. I'm not sure if we have any other, but if we do, then we do. And very important here, the period that you have this student, period one, you could put it, I would like put all the ones first, all the twos, next, so on and so forth. And then over here on the right, you just select what average, what class average you're talking about. And it'll break it down like that. So all you really have to do is put their score in. And if it's out of a hundred, then you just put a hundred here and it's gonna be shown like twice, which is fine. This is like the basic one. The one that's not as basic has a lot more room here. You have room for all of your interim assessments and all your unit exams. If you're gonna choose to use that, it's a lot more involved where you're actually using the spreadsheet to grade the exam. 
Yeah, so if I give a multiple choice test and they get the question correct, you click the box. This is set up so that every multiple choice question is worth two points. So if you want to change your point values, it's a little more involved. You can watch all that information again on this website here. There's a recording of me running through that spreadsheet, but it might be better once you give your interim assessment, just stop by and I can walk you through that myself. Um, whatever works for you. But at the very least, let's be using the basic one where you grade the test however you grade the test and you're just putting in the scores. And you can get, this is what we're looking for, the test summary. We want to have a breakdown for everyone, IEP, L, and gender. And that is coming from up top. That's the information we need to have. It is mandated by the DOE for a lot of classes. So that's, that's what we want. So you might be thinking, how do I get all of this information here. I don't want to type in every kid name by hand and if I, I don't know who has an IEP or an L. So if you go to the FAQ tab, frequently asked questions, no one's ever asked these questions. This is just what I assume. So if you want to add a question to this, uh, I can totally do that. But is there an easy way to get the list of the kids' names? So here's the imager because I don't know how else to show pictures like this. And it has a very step-by-step -step guide with how to do that. It involves Power Teacher Pro, Student Roster, and all that. I'm going to walk you through that. So if you'd like to do this with me, that would be great. If not, take a mental note. And you can always look at that visual. But basically, we want to be power school and good ourselves to Power Teacher Pro. It doesn't matter which class you choose. I'll do my first period. And it'll take you to that. So feel free to do this along with me. Not, I always do it later. But this is a good way to get a list of the kids for any other kind of spreadsheet purposes you're doing in your classroom. Okay, so once we're here, we are gonna go to reports on the left side there. And on the bottom there for my screen, towards the bottom, student roster. It is only gonna have the class that I am signed on to right now on the top there. So I'm gonna go to select classes and I'm gonna choose my other semester one courses except for advisory. I don't believe we're giving interim assessments and advisory. So I'm gonna click off all my semester ones. And here's where you can make your life a little easier. If you're using this spreadsheet, this basic spreadsheet, the order of things are first gender, then student ID, then name. So you can set that up. First gender arrow up, then ID, and then name. It'll just look like that when you run your report. Any questions? Okay, before I run the report, I'm gonna go back up. It'll show you the list of the students if you wanna take anybody out. Let's say you don't wanna put the remote kids, you have a whole separate thing for them, whatever it is. If you go to format, uh, make sure you're getting an Excel sheet, Excel sheet, and everything else should be fine. I hope I'm gonna run my report on the bottom right. I'll give you a little notification up there that it's ready to go. I ran one last week, so I look at my report, downloads it, um, and it's not gonna open in my casted tab, but you'll be able to see um, the kids like a Excel sheet of their gender, M or F, their ID and their name. And you can just copy and paste that into these, uh, whichever spreadsheet you're using, the basic one, the intense one, whatever it is. Are there any questions so far? Yeah, so this is something you're gonna need to do for interim assessment for semester one, interim assessment for semester two. But by all means, do it for every exam if you would like to. But that's the only thing we're requiring is just for the interim assessments. Okay. 
Yes, I'm answering some of Keisha's questions. Who's in the room with me? Any other questions? All right, so I have my report. I can go ahead and copy paste. I could show you what that looks like. Mine started with period three, that's fine. All right. I can, for my PC, I did control shift V and it pastes without messing with the fonts, whatever it is. So let's say all of these kiddos are in period three. You're gonna wanna put threes for all these. You could do it by hand or drag the thing down. Oops, not 33. So basically all these guys are in period three. There you go. Um, all right, so as far as the IEP and L, does anyone know how to easily see who has an IEP or who's an L? Yes, you could have gotten a spreadsheet from your DC. Uh, Hillary sent out a doc um, for me, the way that I did this is I went to Power, uh, Power School. I went to take attendance. And there's these little alerts here. So I click on the name, L. Click on the name, IEP. And then you'll be able to see some other stuff here. If they're remote, birthdays, all that. Cool, any questions on that? So it's good to go through. I know it might seem tedious, but it's nice for you to see over and over again who has an IEP, who's an L, just reiterating that information to yourself over and over again. Couldn't hurt. So go through, select who does what. And then you can start putting in your scores, however you grade your assessment and something else that'll come up. I have an at-risk column here. It's just nice to have a visual. I have it set up that if they have less than a 65, they're at risk. If they're passing, they have a smiley face. If you feel confident in your formulas, change that however you want or you can always just delete that whole column and that would be fine. Uh, what I like to do is once I'm done with period three or whatever it is, I'll go here, I'll select borders and I'll make like a thick border underneath just to separate the periods. So you could do that. Um, but this is a really nice way to get this test summary without having to calculate it by hand. Are there any questions so far? You can come on the mic or use the chat. When it comes to sheets, I'm always a little nervous what silence means. <laughs> Is it like my eyes have glazed over and you're talking nonsense or like, I'm just so excited to get started, I'm speechless. All right, taking it all in, love it, love it. So that's uh, that's pretty much what's going on here. Um, so for me, not that everyone has to do what I do because I've been here forever and love sheets, but if you go to the STEM department here, I'm technically teaching two courses, financial literacy and an honors version. If you click on my name, my cluster here, financial literacy, it'll take you to my fancy spreadsheet. When I ran this as a PD in August, I used Harry Potter as an example. So those are those tabs are labeled PD, but I've already gotten started with my unit one. Karen helped me a lot with grading, shout out to her. But we were able to use Scantrons, which made inputting the data by hand a lot easier because it's already graded for you. And we already have a beautiful unit one exam spreadsheet going here. And we are able to use these standards. So this is what a more advanced, complicated version of data can look like if you're interested. But if not, uh, you have the, the basic option. You just have to go back to the website here, select basic. And if you're using it, just share it with me as soon as, uh, as, soon as you can.
and I don't have too much else prepared. That was pretty much it, just a walk through of how to get to the sheets, how to like what I need you to put in to make the formulas work. And that's uh, that's that. Just make sure if you're using this, you fill in the points. And the score goes here. This has a formula in it, so don't touch that. That's pretty much it. So I have an off period, a uh, second period. Anybody wants to stop by fifth period, I usually walk my dog. Sent old examples of IAs. Absolutely. I will send a copy of mine in the email thread and whoever else has been working here for a while, if you wanna send yours as well. So Leslie, Lori, if you have any IAs, just to have different content examples might be helpful. So um, Jamie, you're, think you're looking at um, the actual assessment itself, not the spreadsheet, right? Just to confirm. Yeah, okay, all right, cool. Um, yeah, I can send you mine as well. Um, I'll do it in the same thread and share mine. Thank you, Leslie, appreciate that. Yeah, I have a math, mine's just math. I will eventually have a financial literacy one, so stay tuned. All right, so some main takeaways today. You're giving two IAs, one in each semester. Um, Share the date of your IA with Rachel, that's me, and DCs soon. Even if you change the date in the future, we're just looking to get a general idea and uh, use the data website to get a spreadsheet. If you have your own unique special way of collecting data, that's awesome. Just have your DC approve it and share that with me. That's pretty much it. If you don't have any other questions, class dismissed. Uh, again, I'm Rachel. I'm in 310B. Stop by whenever. I have a co-teacher, so I am able to talk to you um, pretty much whenever. Of course, Jackie, my pleasure. Thank you, guys. You've been awesome. Troopers, where are you? Woo. Yeah, uh, thank you guys. I know that we do have another one on Friday during lunch. So just mentally prepare for that. All right, we appreciate you giving up your lunch to be present to learn more stuff. Oh, you need, you got snacks, Rachel has snacks. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Any questions you can let us know. See ya, enjoy your last 10 minutes. Bye guys, I'll stick around. All right, everyone's gone. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, totally. No problem. Um, all right. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, you can just post the recording. Yes. Um, all right. Cool. Adios. All right. See ya. Thank you.